Are you sick of all of the Goodreads awards content? That's too damn bad! You wanna tell the people hello? Say hi! Oh, grump grump. Okay, let's see. Okay, there's gonna be minimal editing for this video because I'm filming it last minute. So, sorry about that. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm loving all the Goodreads Awards content. I don't remember if last year there was this much, but <laughs> I'm here for it because everyone has different opinions, right? Everyone had different predictions and reactions, responses to what is on the first round of voting. There have been some changes to the Goodreads Choice Awards. I've watched Bethany's live stream, Angela's video. I watched Tori's video. So if you see this and you're like, damn, another Goodreads Choice Awards video, I guess I can't do one. Lies, put yours out, I wanna see it. Let me know. Anyway, I just wanna do a quick reaction to the Goodreads Choice Awards, the ones that were nominated. See if my predictions were right. And then I'm just gonna make from this round right here, I'm gonna make a preliminary guess on who's going to win. Um, so yeah, let's do it. But also um, a quick note that I guess a couple categories have been removed, um, ch picture books, um, cookbooks and science and technology, if I'm correct, were removed. And also there used to be a write-in option. So on the first round, you had the option if your favorite book and that category wasn't nominated, you could write it in. And they seem to have removed that. Um, I don't know why. Some guesses were maybe because those books never win. So maybe they just took it out altogether. Apparently because of the um, the way they calculate the votes is cumulative. So the ones that get written in always are behind, basically, essentially in the votes. I don't know. But anyway, that's not here. So let's go through the awards, switch to my screen here. And I've already voted in a couple categories once they were posted. Nigel, what are you doing? So you'll see my vote. But... All right, we're gonna start with fiction. And uh, I vote. I voted for Detransition Baby because that's the only one I read. Also, I would love to know, because some people, this came up during Bethany's Live. Do you vote in a category if you've only read one book or do you feel like you need to read multiple in the category to vote? If I've read one book, I'm gonna vote for that book. However, if I don't like, only if I like that book. But if I only read one, I didn't like it, I'm not gonna vote. And then if I haven't read any, I'm not gonna vote. But I'm not surprised Detransition, not surprised Detransition Baby is here. Some of these other ones I hadn't heard of. I thought this book just came out, but that's not unusual for Goodreads. Um, I knew Sally Rooney would be here. I know in Bethany's live, she was talking about Dial 8 for aunties and that it was pitched or kind of marketed as a romance, which I thought it was a romance, but it's more just literary book. Sorry, Nigel in the back is enjoying his toy. I totally forgot about We Are the Brennans in Black Buck. For the longest time, I thought Black Buck was a nonfiction book. And then I thought this was fantasy or historical, but I guess not. And then, um, oh wait, this is the same author of All the Light We Cannot See. Oh, wow, Why? that's not historical? Hmm. And then good that Nicholas Sparks is not in the romance category. So this one is not like I expected to have read many of these because I don't read a lot of just like literary fiction. So cool, cool. Next to mix mystery thriller. I already voted for Razor Blade Tears. Um, I am shocked to see this one here, but Bethany said that it is like a heist novel. I thought it was historical fiction. Um, not surprised on Sherry Lapina, even though I haven't read that. Arsenic and Adobo, I still haven't read. I'm ashamed. Um, someone did comment under my video about the Stephen King book. Not shocked at the Maidens, The Wife Upstairs. I do remember hearing about The Good Sister, but I don't know if people liked it or not. The Push is here, so I was right and a slow fire burning, razor blade tears. I totally didn't even realize any <laughs> about any of these. Um, I don't even know what this book is, but apparently I wanna read it. <laughs> so, oh wow, I didn't even do a good job. So if we go back to fiction, I think the Sally Rooney is gonna win. Like, I thought this was a romance also. Anyway, I think Sally Rooney is gonna win in that category. And I think it's always interesting how they move the books around. 
I don't know what that does. But in this category, of course, I want S.A. Cosby to win. And it was a book of the month pick. So I think that does give it some push and like popularity. But if I had to guess, I'm going to say that I'm going to say the Maidens is going to win. That's my that's my prediction. I'm saddened. I haven't read any historical fiction this year. I wanted to read The Four Winds and then I've heard not great things about it, but I do still plan to read it. Um, a lot of these I haven't heard of. I did hear of this, Immortals on the Lincoln Highway. I remember Ashley at Bookish Realm read The Yellow Wife and really enjoyed it. She said it was a kind of a hard book to read though. So I wanted to get that to that one eventually. I thought the final revival of Opal and Nev was a romance, but I obviously don't know things. The Prophets I heard was amazing. I know people have been enjoying the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, although it's a chunky book. I know Malibu Rising is super popular. I haven't read that one yet. And Alas Apothecary. Uh, I obviously I'm not voting, but if I had to say who is going to win, it's probably going to be Taylor Jenkins Reid because of her popularity. Let's be honest. Now the fantasy category, if you saw my short my YouTube short, then you already know how I feel about two of the books that are um, on this list. Is my internet working? So I'm not surprised The Graduate is here. Of course, I'm upset that A Quarter Silver Flames and Crown of Gilded Bones is here. Even people who like Jennifer L. Armentrout hated that book, said it was trash. So. I'm annoyed because paranormal romance needs its own and like paranormal romance, fantasy romance needs its own category because hands down Sarah J Mass is going to win. I don't think it's a competition. JLA may give her a little run for her money, but you know, Sarah Janet is going to win. Um, but I'm really happy that P. Jelly Clark was nominated. I still haven't read a Master of Gin. I'm shameful, but I'm glad to see that here. There is some more uh color in this year's awards lots of different people from different ethnicities and different stories like we have a queer story here the unbroken by cl clark and also the jasmine throne by tasha surrey still need to read that one i like the unbroken well enough um she became the sun she who became the sun may also be sapphic by shelly parker chan still need to read that one um i didn't even know this was coming out <sighs> I'm so behind. I'm so ashamed that I haven't read The Shadow of the Gods, but I got in such a fantasy funk that I got behind with that one. Um, that's really like the only, you know, typical white dude fantasy that I got nominated this year was The Shadow of the Gods. TJ Klune is white too, but you know, he's a he's a gay white. So like, I know some people are upset. Joe Abercrombie had a release and it is not on here. Shocked. Brandon Sanderson didn't have an adult book come out this year, so not surprising well so if he did he would be on this list I'm sure but um there's yeah there's just so much different stories than we usually see like The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo I know Joshana loved that The Inheritance of Orchidia Divina I know has people have been loving um The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed I've heard some good things about Sorrowland by River Solomon I've wanted to read but I thought it was like for re some reason I thought it was like sci-fi horror I don't know. Uh, the Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman. Why did I think they came out last year? But yeah, so great choices. I just wish that A Court of Silver Flames and A Crown of Gilded Bones had their own category because they're going to overshadow all of these other amazing choices. And it's probably going to be a huge gap in between Sarah and then the other people. But you know, I mean, I mean, I guess it's better that at least the nominees are a step up from last year romance i voted for actor h eve brown now i did also love the soulmate equation but i feel like christina lauren has a bigger like you know mainstream following so i wanted to vote for actor h eve brown initially to give it another vote you know and then if it doesn't make it i would vote for the soulmate equation um but I think those are the only ones I read. I haven't gotten to, I know the Spanish Love Deception is big on TikTok. A lot of people have been reading the X-Hex. Um, I haven't heard a lot about Sally Thorne's second book. I loved uh, The Hating Game, but I haven't read that one. Jasmine Guillory, which she's a very popular mainstream black romance author. I haven't read any of her books. I haven't read The Heart Principle. But I figured that would be on here. It happened one summer is here seven days in June. 
one last stop. So a lot that I thought were gonna be on here are people we meet on vacation, the love hypothesis. I'm shocked that shipped is on here because I didn't hear a lot of people talk about it. Um, I read it and it was okay, I DNF'd it. And the Neon Gods, which is super popular. I know a lot of people were reading that one. Um, I don't, I don't remember hearing much about the dating plan or the charm offensive. I actually is the first time I've heard of that one. I saw the X talk briefly. Beth O'Leary, um, I didn't like the flash hair, so I DNF'd it. And I haven't heard much about the road trip. Um, the cover's very cute though. Life's too short, I heard about kind of, and then I hadn't really heard about how to feel at flirting. So out of all of these, obviously I want actor Age Eve Brown to win. If that can't win, I would love the soulmate equation by Christina Lauren to win. But if I had to guess, I'm going to say that people we meet on vacation is going to win. Like, and its competition will be the love hypothesis, I think. Or maybe one last stop, because Casey McQuiston is really popular. But I think people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry is gonna take the cake. Nigel, best science fiction. Um, let's see. So, I knew Fugitive Telemetry was gonna be on here. Murderbot is super popular, but I'm behind. I totally forgot about Adrian Tchaikovsky. Um, I haven't heard of Firebreak, The End of Men. I haven't, I've seen Neil Stevenson, but I've never read any of his books, but I guess he's a popular sci-fi author. Um, I guessed Becky Chambers' other book because I didn't know if a novella was gonna make it, but A Song for the Wild Bill did make it. I did read and enjoy The Echo Wife. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna vote for it though. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I did really like it. I didn't love it though. Of course, Andy Weir is here. I don't know what Appleseed is. I haven't heard of The Last Watch. I haven't heard of The Last Watch? Star Wars, The Desolation Call Peace. I haven't heard of a lot of these. Rabbits, Constance, Girl One, Machine Hood. I haven't heard of any of these. Light from Uncommon Stars. I feel like I've seen the cover. Okay, Clara and the Sun by Kazuko Ishiguro is in sci-fi, not in literary. Um, Nydia Corfor, Remote Control, and Winter's Orbit. Okay, I have not, I've only read The Echo Wife. I did, I am considering reading Project Hail Mary because people say I should give him another try and I might. I eventually will get to Fugitive Telemetry. Um, I've wanted to read Winter's Orbit and um, I still haven't even read A Memory Called Empire. So, whoops, I don't know if I'm gonna vote for the Echo Wife, I don't know. But I know that Andy Weir's gonna win the category. I think the closest runner up will be Martha Wells for Fugitive Telemetry, but I feel like Andy Weir's gonna take that. He's got a mass appeal, if you know what I mean. Best horror, okay, I voted for A Diary of Blood. It is incredible, incredible. I don't think I've read many of the other ones. Um, I don't know that I will give Mona Awad another chance after that mess that was Bunny. I've been hearing about the Book of Accidents, My Heart is a Chainsaw, I wanted to read. I haven't heard of a lot of these though, like The Whispering Dead, Chasing the Boogeyman, uh, Bloodline, Cackle, The Hollows. I didn't even, see, I knew Stephen King was gonna have a horror book out, I knew it. I did read When the Reckoning Comes and I liked it, I didn't love it. What? I was right in guessing The Last House on Needless Street was gonna be on here. I didn't know Summer Suns was a horror, so that's interesting. Um, but all of these, and I knew Grady Hendrix would be on here, but like these come for me with apples near the bone. I haven't read or heard of any of these. Where They Wait, Come With Me, I don't know these. Um, so if I had to guess, I would think that if it's not Stephen King, because people just always vote for Stephen King. So if we take Stephen King out of the equation, I think Grady Hendrix will win or Stephen Graham Jones. I feel like those are kind of close. I feel like Stephen King sadly has, you know, he's been around forever, has more popularity. Um, I don't know, I haven't heard about the book, if it's good or not, but I would love it to be Stephen Graham Jones or Grady Hendrix or anybody but Stephen, honestly. Humor, I haven't read any of these, I don't think. I would like to read Quinta Brunson's book because she's hilarious, but no, I haven't read any of these. Um, so I would say if I had to guess that probably Leslie Jordan's book because he, he's gotten huge in the last couple years on like social media or maybe David Sedaris just because I've heard his name a lot 
will win. Oh, wow, Nick Offerman has a book. Okay, I kind of want to read that because he's hilarious. But yeah, I don't have a good, or maybe Seth Rogen, I don't have a good feel for that category. So best nonfiction. So I threw this in at the end of my video, I'm ashamed, and but there's like m multiple nonfiction categories. So I didn't realize that Mediocre came out this year. I thought it came out last year. So that's what I voted for because it was incredible. Um, but Jane Goodall's book is here, The Premonition, that one I did, um, I hadn't heard about it, but I just guessed it would be on here. Cultish, of course, I want to read that one. Um, this is Your Mind on Plants. Michael Pollan, I used to have one of his books, I think The Omnivore Diet or something, and I never read it, I unhold it, but I seem, he comes out with a book, it seems like every couple years. This book, Think Again by Adam Grant is on here. Now, I said I didn't want to read this book. I said it was popular, so it probably went, ran. I said this was a popular one because I think it had like 30,000 ratings, so it probably would win. It says want to read. I don't, who, who be adding these things to my list because I surely do not remember, uh, but apparently I want to read it. I heard really good things about The Disordered Cosmos and The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. Um, I have only read like two of his young adult fiction books, but I heard that this is a really good book. So there are some on here that I really want to read. I might do a separate like, uh, Goodreads Choice Awards nominees that I really want to read because some of them I do um, and those are two of them. Obviously I read Mediocre. I I don't care really to read How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates because unless the book is talking about how he's going to use all of his money to give to organizations to fix the climate and do all these things, I don't want to read it. I really don't and I know he gives a lot of money but he doesn't give enough because he's still rich as fuck so if you're a billionaire and you're giving money but you're still a billionaire because I know you can write it off on your taxes you're not giving enough money for me honey no fuck off um fuzz by Mary Roach is this the same author who wrote stiff because if it is so many people love stiff and I I guess like because she uses more humor and her humor is not for me so I didn't love that one um, and I wanted to read The Comfort Book by Matt Haig because I really love The Midnight Library and then I have not heard of these. Oh, is this about the town in California? Yep. Paradise? I bet you that's really sad. So I already voted for Mediocre, but if I had to guess, um, I don't know who's going to win this category. I'm just going to go with the Adam Grant because so oh, oh, basic or John Green. I think it's probably going to be one of those two. It's going to be a white dude. I mean, are we surprised? Nigel, stop looking at your feet. Come here. Come here. Boo boo. You know, got my couch wet by licking your feet. Nasty boy. Okay. Tell him hi. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> okay. Best memoir. Okay, I voted for somebody's daughter. I haven't read. Ooh, excuse you. I, don't th I think it's the only one I've read. I don't read a lot of memoirs or autobiographies, um, but I do want to get to Cicely Tyson's Just As I Am, Rest in Peace, Queen. Um, I heard that Priyanka Chopra's book was... <laughs> Girl, please. Angel, sit down. Sit down. Um, let's see. Crying in H Mart are her really good things about... Ooh, Stanley Tucci? I didn't realize he had a, a memoir, um, uh, Unbound. Oh, I love that cover. I love the art style. Um, Seeing Ghost. I feel like I, maybe all of, from a book I'll talk about that one, Hunter Biden. So I've only read one, I voted for somebody's daughter, but if I had to guess in this category, it would probably be, Andrew McCarthy wrote a book? Interesting. Um, Crying at H Mart is probably the one I've heard about the most. So I'm going to say Crying in H Mart or Hunter Biden will probably win. Don't ask why, I'm calculating that, but that's what I say. Then the history and biography, have not heard of a lot of these. I did read Vanderbilt, but it wasn't as great as I was hoping it was going to be. Um, I'm going to read Empire of Pain before the month is up. So I don't know if this will still be the opening rounds. I'll have to look at the dates. Uh, to see if that'll still be up here to vote for. But there are some on here I'm really interested in, like The Code Breaker sounds really good. I still haven't read How to the World this past, but I was, first I was like, oh no, it's not on here. I guess this one and 400 Souls, but I guess they're under um, this section for nonfiction. Um, 
I haven't heard of the three mothers. How the mothers of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and J James Baldwin shaped the nation. I haven't even heard of that one, but that sounds good. No one cares. No one cares about Bose of the Clown. And then, of course, 400 Souls. So I'm so uh, upset at myself that I haven't read um, some of these yet, um, but I hadn't heard of a lot of these either. If I had to guess, I mean, I would not be mad at Empire Pain of Pain 1 just because of the subject matter and the family that it's covering. Um, and it sounds... I have a friend reading it right now and they're like, oh, it's so good, but you're gonna be so mad. And I'm like, <laughs> yay. I didn't realize that Rachel Maddow wrote a book. Um, let's see, James Patterson and somebody? Yeah, let's not, let's not do that. Let's not. So, I mean, I can't, I don't know who to guess in this one, honestly. I'm just going to say, hi, Bookie. I'm going to say Patrick Radden Keefe for Empire Pain. But honestly, Anderson Cooper might win it. <laughs> or Malcolm Gladwell. He's pretty popular too. I don't know. And then I haven't read any graphic novels or comics. So if uh, Alice Oseman is here, I would guess that they would win, but I don't see them here. So I really have no... V.E. Schwab probably will win then. I really don't have any good take on that. Or Dune, I don't know. I don't read poetry. So I'm not sure here. Um, I did hear good things about Chlorine Sky, I think. Moth, I didn't realize was a... Ooh, I bet you Amanda Gorman, The Hill We Climb will win. And it should, it's amazing. I haven't... Ooh, debut novel. Ah, Firekeeper's daughter. All right, but there's a lot of good stuff on here. I've heard people love The Push, The Gilded Ones, The Spanish Love Deception. A lot of these are super popular books that I've heard really great things about. And I've only read Firekeeper's Daughter. I read Detransition Baby, another good choice. Um, those are the only ones I read, but I wanted to read Open Water, The Love Sounds of W.E.B. Du Bois. I mean, that book is like this. So, but Firekeeper's Daughter, it deserves, it deserves. I also need to read The Prophets. But if I had to guess in this category, I would say, mm, mm, but which one do you think is gonna win? Here, I don't. here, point to the screen. Which one do you think is gonna win? Hmm? Which one's gonna win? Nigel said The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. So that's what we're going with. Boo -boo. Look at the people. <laughs> He's so stank. Best young adult fiction. Again, I voted for Firekeeper's Daughter. So some of the ones I expected to be on here are Concrete Rose. I totally forgot about Perfect. It's on paper. Ace of Spades. Hawthorne Legacy um, are here. I forgot about The Project and Yolk. The Cousins, yep, The Box in the Woods. I haven't really heard about Tokyo Ever After. You have a match. I Emma Lord's name is familiar, but I haven't heard of that book. The Last Night at the Telegraph Club just won some other book award, so maybe that is a strong contender. Um, Instructions for Dancing I heard was really good, but really sad. So I don't know. Also heard, I know that this one, As Good As Dead, is like the third in the A Good Girl's guide to murder or something which is a popular why mystery thriller series so mm, if it's not for keep us daughter like it should be i would guess there's another book child i would mm, excuse me i don't know i would honestly guess the last night at the telegraph club or ace of spades honestly i think nigel all right, and then young adult fantasy and fiction and science fiction. I expected to see a lot of these are violent ends. The ones we're meant to find, okay. Yep, Rule of Wolves, Rainbow Rowell, House of Hollow, Once Upon a Broken Heart. Oh, Steffi Garber's new book, Six Crimson Cranes. Why did I think this book came out last year? Jesus. It does say 2020. Maybe it was the end of last year? I don't know. We Free the Stars, Lore. I haven't heard one single good thing about Lore. The King of Elf, hey, oh my God, please leave us alone. Gods and Monsters, Run, mm, it's hard to, I still think Rule of Wolves will win. 
but I think Lee may have some competition from Cassandra Clare with Chain of Iron and Holly Black with the King of Elfame. Mm-hmm. And I think this might be the last category. Of course, I voted for Amari because Amari is the winner here. I'm so sad because I, I loved Root Magic also, but I just loved Amari that much more. A lot of people under my video reminded me that Rick Riordan had a book that came out and that was Daughter of the Deep. And I didn't even realize Victoria Schwab had a book come out. <sighs> and I did really like The City of the Play God. That was really fun. But, but Amari is the queen here, okay? I feel like Uncle Rick is gonna win just because, and he seems like a really great guy, you know? But Amari deserves this. Amari deserves it. So that was the end. So I think I made some um, fair predictions. I will say surprised that Empire of the Vampire wasn't a fantasy nomination or Joe Abercrombie. They were like, we got one, we got room for one straight white man on this list and it went to John Gwynn. And you know what? I'm not mad about it. Um, surprise also that, <laughs> Hi. that they got rid of write-ins. Um, I feel like I had more thoughts while I was watching Bethany's replay. I think they also, all, in addition to adding in like a fantasy, a fantasy romance, paranormal romance category, I think they also should have a best audiobook category. That would be really cool, like based on performance, you know, because some audiobooks are freaking phenomenal and some aren't. So I would love to know if you agree with that or are there any other categories that you think should be added in? What were your thoughts on the list? Did you vote? Did you see any of your favorites? Um, I am actually, <laughs> I'm not like mad or embarrassed that I haven't read more of the books that were on here, but there are books that I was hyped about last year, beginning of this year. And then I got into different, you know, genre reading slump, slumps and I haven't gotten to, particularly a lot of fantasy and science fiction. So going into next year, I'll definitely want to focus on some of those. Um, I'm glad that at least in some categories, they're not as beige <laughs> as they normally are. Um, but it still is weird how they come up with their selections. Like some of these books just, you know, came out on Tuesday and are, are on here or something and how they don't, I don't know, the categories. I know, I think Kayla from Books and Lala during uh, Bethany's Live was saying like, they don't include young adult in the historical fiction, but then like, where does that go? Or I think it could be better. They could have more categories and have a different like, it's probably a computer choosing, but different maybe parameters for like, it's for these books that came out from like January 1 to, I don't know, October 31st, if they're gonna have the awards in November, so that people actually have time to read them because like a book comes out the same day as the list comes out. I don't know. Just thoughts, but I would love to know any and all of your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching this video. Nigel, are you gonna tell your patrons thank you? Are you gonna tell your patrons thank you? Let's do it together. Mwah. Thank you, babies, besties, Lisa, Hannah, Brina, Kayla, Jamie, Rainer, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elizabetta, Amber, Celine, Maria, and Serena, and Nigel, Nigel the Fondry stands. They stand, you boo boo. Brianna, Katrina, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Gary, Demery, and Rainey. And we thank you to the admirers and friends of Baybay. Boo boo. Tell everybody hi. Tell everybody hello. Say thank you for watching. Thank you for buying me treats and toys that I destroy. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, check out the description. I don't know, there's stuff down there. <laughs> Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.